This is interesting to me. Fear of intimacy. Yes. It, do you think uh, polyamory people, and again, you're not a, you, that's one of the things you've tried, but do you think that's a, a symptom of a fear of intimacy? I don't know if it necessarily is, but it, I mean, it can be. Anything can be. Hypersexuality is a, mm -hmm. a kind of fear of intimacy thing, tr traditionally. Yeah. You know, when somebody's hypersexual, hyper focused on sex, that's definitely a way to disassociate from sex, oddly. Yeah. You know, uh, disassociate from intimacy. But I have, I think, uh, my fear of it really is, uh, I think it's like, because every relationship I've, I've been in, I've created a myth of the person that I was with. I never really saw them, you know? And, and I was more reliant on the myth of who they were and uh, trying to stay within that mythology rather than actually getting to know them. How would you do that? Well, it was just like, uh, just, being with a person and not really um, allowing them to be themselves or not really accepting when they were themselves or not really getting to know or be with them. And, and part of that is like creating a persona for myself, like feeling like I had to be a person that they might love, mm. you know, like having to perform intimacy rather than actually being intimate with somebody. Was what is it? Is it are you afraid of being rejected? You're afraid yeah. of being boring? What it is is that I'm feeling so um inherently unlovable that you have to create a person that could be loved in order to achieve that. So I was like creating this persona. Who were some of these personas that you created? Persona would be like it's really like the cool girl, like yeah. in Gone Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm like a pick me. Like I'm like really down with uh, anything. Yeah. Like I'll def I'll ride road motorcycles without a helmet. Like you know, I'll definitely you know do the like I'll I love action films. I yeah. love yeah, yeah, yeah. prog rock. I love like all these things that yeah. I don't like or I don't care for. <laughs> I don't care for at all. But I'll pretend to like them in order for this person who is deeply inter interested in these things to like me. If you knew that he was into motorcycles and prog rock, how, what was your uh, ideation of him? Um, that here's somebody who must be so unique and he's so uh, brave and he's got money to spend on these projects. He's got money to go see Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. <laughs> you know, whatever. Like he wants uh -huh. to go ride in the desert to go see these bands. Or, you know, we're going to go ride... Um, in the Italian Alps and then go, go, you know, go see these rock shows in Valparaiso, whatever. Uh -huh. It's like such a weird fantasy of a person. Do you find people just sort of disappointingly boring? Because I feel like that's part of being sober yeah. is just being like, life's kind of boring yeah. and people are real regular. Yeah. And moments of like connection are, are sort of rare and magical. Right. right. Also, as I get older, like you're, hormones are less apt to to want to fuel the fantasy of like wanting to be this person because they are boring and your hormones are really that's where the the chemical reactions are your hormones are creating a person that as a potential partner a potential mate that seems more exciting than they actually are yeah like poisons our perception mm -hmm. of yeah, yeah to think that it's like this is gonna and then and it starts writing fantasies about like, and then yeah. we're gonna go to the Alps. And, <laughs> it, and, always and then has, it always ends up in the Alps. Of course. It's always <laughs> the Alps or- the Dolomites. The Dolomites, <laughs> always. Um, and did you, did you, re what was, did you have an awakening with that where it was like, what am I, did you ever sex addiction? I don't know if it was ever sex addiction, but I just had a lot of sex mm -hmm. that didn't make sense. Sex that I didn't, really enjoy or understand that I was like, what is this even, what is this? Why am even? I doing this? Why am I doing this? Um, Would you say it was hormonal or? No, that was like just sheer out of uh, curiosity. Some of it is also like wanting to be perceived as a free spirit and wanting to be perceived as somebody who was really like kinky and wild. And I accept and appreciate all those things. And there's a part of me that really enjoys it as an mm -hmm. aesthetic and also as a lifestyle. And I, I have a lot of really great, lovely friends who are involved in it very deeply. Mm -hmm. But for myself, I'm like, I think a lot of this is performative. Like what my interest is in it is kind of like trying to make somebody think that I like this because I think they are somebody that I might 
want to be with. It's so interesting because from the outside in, it from the outside in, you as someone who's never been into any sort of kink stuff, I'm like, I don't. Are you? Do you? Are you really into this, or is it? It's impossible to tell who's actually into yeah. it. Yeah. Or and who's doing it for the Dude, social capital. This. Yeah. And yeah. and you're saying it was hard to know within yourself. Yeah. It's hard to know because there's like part of me that is attracted to it and part of me that's like I don't know what's going on. Like I I really wanted to appear uh kinky when I was uh I was dating this guy who was a uh, unit publicist for uh like Dawson's Creek or one of the what mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. shows. I'm not sure. And he was very into the scene and very, uh, he he uh, would do these things for me at this like club where uh, he would set my leg on fire. He would put uh, <laughs> and sanitizer on my leg and then light it. And it was like, what? How? In front of people? Yeah, like, yeah. It was like a like, formative like thing. A- and How I'm like, long would this it is... like, here they come? Did you have a song? Was it like a whole <laughs> thing? Or was it just like a bunch of people hanging out? A bunch of people you're... hanging out. Okay. And uh, and I'm like, what? I don't know what's sexy about this. Like, I, I was just like, and I really, he was great. But I just was like, what is sexy about this? Like, I can't really, I don't understand what's sexual about this. Like, and, and would people compliment you or did you like the feeling it gave you, like the perception of you? I think it was like because it was like, uh, I always love the magician's assistant. Who doesn't? I love the magician's yep. assistant. So that to me was like, it was kind of part of that. Like I was living out the like fantasy or fetish of being the magician's assistant. But at the same time, it was like a false self that I was putting forward that I was like into this because I'm not. There was another guy who... Um, he was cool. He was in his seventies. He had a junk, like a Chinese ship, like a junk, uh, a Chinese ship, a junk, uh, parked in the marina, like a Marina del Rey. And so he would, he bought a, uh, veterinary s- s- suction machine <laughs> that was used in surgery. So he rigged it so that it would, um, suck on his penis and it would inflate it to the size of basketball. And uh, so he uh, would just have that in his lap. This is part of the same functions that, you know, my leg would get set on fire. This is like one of those things. Oh, and then the guy would be ne- a few chairs down with yeah. the machine. Yeah. The, with the, he would leave the junk in the marina, and but he would bring something to the, suck his su- junk. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> to enlarge his junk at uh, the club. And um, he was so interesting, but I'm like, what? It, and I'm like, why am I here? What am I yeah. doing here? Have you ever met up with these people afterward and been like, were you really into that? Because I was. I do is there uh, in my head more women do this? And but uh, maybe I'm just wrong. Where it's like they, it's the pick me thing of like, no, I'm I'm cool and I'm 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 sexually permissive and yeah. risk taking and all that stuff. But like, men have more risk taking chemicals than women. Yeah, just naturally. Yeah. So I wonder, is there uh, it doesn't even necessarily need to be gendered, but but it is interesting when you realize, like, was I even into that? Yeah, I don't think so. But I'm also, it is kind of a pick me thing of like, look, I'm so cool, I'm so free spirited and open minded. Look at the places I go, but then I look back and I'm like, well, I appreciate it. Now I do things like, um, you know, I, I definitely uh, have done a lot of different things in the BDSM community, like work as a documentarian and do different mm-hmm. things. And like I see things that are just so amazing and I love it, but I don't know if I would like it. Like stuff with Do you like, believe that the people that say they like it actually like it? Yeah. Can you tell the difference? Yeah, because they're they're engaged in it and, you know, we see them and they're like using cactus in their pain play mm-hmm. and um, stuff. And I'm like, that's great. You know, I love that people are using plants who are trying to <laughs> kill trying us. To kill it. Yeah, it, it serves a lot of needs for you. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes sense to me or, or like duct tape. Duct tape is a one, a weird one. There was a guy that would like wrap his whole body in duct tape and then just stick it and unstick it like a mummy, <laughs> but stick it and unstick it inside his like encasement okay. and it was just about the sound of stick would he and be stick. hard um i couldn't really tell but i think that was the goal yeah 
It always is. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it, though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab-assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe. And then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high-pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.